sweet her heart. <laughs> Today I'm filming a Meet the Horses vlog because if you follow me on my Instagram you'll see that's the one that most people voted for on the poll on my story. And if you're not following me on Instagram it's at Flo Carter Eventing. Go give me a follow. <laughs> I've actually already filmed the entire vlog, filmed the intro, edited it and put it up on YouTube on private. I was watching it back before making it go public and I just didn't really like the start. I felt it was a bit boring. It's quite an art to be able to stand and talk about yourself for almost 20 minutes so I'm gonna cut it down a bit gonna refilm the intro and hope that maybe this is a little bit snappier and smoother and gets the message across without just me waffling for ages about things that you probably aren't interested in <laughs> so without further ado let's take it away a few people said at the start of the vlog they'd love to know a little bit more about my journey as a rider it puts into a bit more context the horses that we've got and how I've kind of progressed on my journey which obviously makes sense. So I actually started riding when I was about seven or eight. I actually learnt in a riding school. I had an hour's lessons on a Sunday morning with some friends. We just sort of pot around, walk around, trot around, go over some poles, come home and that was it. There was no competing. I was never an outstanding rider. It was just a hobby and something that I enjoyed. And then when I was about 11, 12, my mum was like, right, you've joined secondary school. It's now time you can get your first pony. So we travelled really far <laughs> to look for one and we found a little 13T pony in Wales after about four or five horses I tried and it was the most exciting thing ever and he was called Harvey. He introduced me into the world of pony club and the world of a bit of unaffiliated show jumping and made me realise, right, I don't want to just go on hacks and do lessons. I definitely want to be out competing because that's what I find interesting and that's what I enjoy as a rider. I'm quite a competitive person, so I've always known that I like to have that sort of drive, something to work towards. And then after that, we ended up getting a little 14 to Connemara, Taui, who you'll actually meet in a minute because we still have her because no one can bear to say goodbye to her. And she introduced me into eventing, which is also another reason why she's so special. And again, it was like a bulldog moment. This is it. Even more than show jumping, I definitely, definitely enjoy the eventing. Days out are longer, and if you have a pearl, you don't go home out of the money, you carry on. And that was, <laughs> that was pretty much the joy of it. So obviously from there, things just escalated further. I moved on to horses, I started eventing at bigger levels. Having specific aims to work towards, I wanted to be on area teams and I met that and then I wanted to go to Pony Club Champs for anything and I met that and then I wanted to go for eventing and I met that and then I wanted to be on the under 18 teams for Frickley and we were long listed and we didn't quite make that and I think that's something else that's important to stress that sometimes you reach your goals, sometimes you don't and all riders will face that and the joy of riding is there's just so many other goals you can set yourself so now we're on to looking towards Bishop's Burton under 21 young rider two star if you know what that means if you don't I'll probably explain it in another video when I fully got my head around the concept <laughs> and also the open pony club event two champs I shall bring in the horses because that's what you're really here for So this is Chowie, she's 14 too, she's almost 13 years old now and we've had her for about 5 years which makes her the pony that we've owned for the longest because nobody can bear to say goodbye to her, she's too special. She's actually the pony that got me into eventing in the first place which is pretty cool. Um, we did our first unaffiliated 18 together and uh, in the time that I've had her we've gone all the way up to B100 so we usually stick at 90 <laughs> Danny, because it's where she's happiest and comfortable and she's just like a double play machine at that level. Oh, you're tired already. She's uh, very greedy, as you can probably see. We've had to get the treats out to lure her out here, and yeah, she's very greedy. But she's uh, very easy to win over. All you need is a bit of food. So, some of our great achievements together include going to the Pony Club Champs in <laughs> all three disciplines. We went for dressage. We qualified the first time we ever went to areas, which is crazy because I remember thinking it was like such an amazing achievement to be selected for areas. We then qualified team show jumping. We actually just missed out by one place as a team. And then we got a phone call saying that a team actually wasn't going up. 
and we could have their place and that was like an OMG moment. So that year was the first time I'd ever been to areas and I sort of went into eventing going, oh yeah, it's easy to qualify. And I was in the B team, I was like absolutely determined because obviously eventing is, oh, scoreboard. Eventing is what I do and what I love. I was in the B team and I got a phone call on the day heading up to my first ever area eventing saying, one of the ponies in the A team's had an injury, we're bumping you up to the A team and I was so excited. We posted a sub 30 dress size with a clear show jumping and I was like, this is it, we're off to the champs, here we go. And everyone was talking about how tight the time was across country and they were all cutting short on this little 90 combination which was already really steep and really technical and I was like, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that. Ride really tight to the B line, came up to it, we were going clear and completely just lost the A part, like went into it. So sort of thinking about the B part, I didn't even go in at the A part. We had a stop and it was the first stop and the only stop she's ever had on her record because she's like a little country machine. And that was kind of like a big lesson for me that even like the most consistent and perfect ponies, you've got to ride them, you've got to get in, like, you've got to, you've got to remember they're only horses. And from there I kind of learned and progressed as a rider, so Tally's responsible for a lot of that, but she's an absolute machine out of eventing. Like I said, that's in five years of owning her and four years of eventing her, that's the only stop or fault she's ever picked up cross country. She had one season, 2018, where every time she went out and evented, she finished in the top 10. So she is like a little super pony. And she just doesn't really have any quirks. Food kind of controls her life, so everything else is uh, solvable by food. She's just such a happy, friendly pony, which is why we can't bear to say goodbye to her. She was meant to go about three years ago when I moved on to horses, but here we are. So yeah, I think the only other thing to say is our aims for 2020. <laughs> what dare we? Um, if it was just her, I'd definitely be focusing on, on getting to the Bampton Grassroots Champs. She's absolutely designed for that, as well as getting back to Pony Club Champs. The year that we went up there, we finished fourth um, in the eventing champs, and we had a really unlucky pole, which is quite uncharacteristic for her. Without the pole, we would have won the whole thing. So that's what I believe she's capable of, definitely winning the whole thing. She thinks so too. But she will actually be for sale in the summer, which is really sad because nobody wants to say goodbye to her, but I just can't take a 14-2 pony to university as much as I would love to. It's too selfish. She can go on and teach another rider the ropes for venting like she did for me. So that's Towie. Now we've got to have a little break while we uh, drive up to the yard and meet the boys. Also, this is a late addition, but I completely forgot to mention that Towie's name is actually Towie and it is actually after the Anywhere's Essex, which is something that everyone finds really funny because it is we didn't name her but it's a name that definitely has stuck and that's her show name as well and it is after the only way is Essex. it's not pronounced toey it's towie so now i'm here with ashley who if you follow me on instagram you'll probably know the most because he's been the main horse that i've been eventing this season we've had him for about two years his show name is Auburn done he's 16 one and he's also rising 13 years old so he was kind of my next step up i actually had a lone pony for a little while between towie and him but then I wanted to step up and maybe start thinking about a pony that had the capability to do novice. We actually went and viewed a horse a little way away, I say a little way, about four hours away in Cheshire. And I really liked it so much that we went back for a second viewing, which is a very, like, it's a big commitment for us. But it was the first horse that we looked at. So my mum suggested that because all our other horses that we've been to look at have been a little bit more complex, we had to go and see like five or six before we found the right one. She suggested that we go and looked at one more. We found one online that kind of ticked the boxes. He had a good B100 record. He'd done one novice and not really had any success. He'd actually had a couple of stops across country. But he was local and he was a gorgeous darn colour. So let's go and have a look just to, you know, just to scope out the field, make sure we're not rushing into anything. And I went sort of thinking that this other horse that we tried was going to be the one. And this was just one to try, but I absolutely fell in love with him. Like straight away, I was like, this is the one. Um, he's definitely been like the easiest decision that I've made in terms of buying horses because he's just so fun. All of my friends that I rode him agree. He's like just so chill, so fun. He just absolutely loves his job. And literally the first time I sat on him, I was like, this is the one. So we then took him to the country, got him vetted, and that was quite a quite quick turnaround. He was definitely the simplest horse we've bought. All of the other horses that we've looked for have been a little bit more complicated. Um, so he's, again, really, really easy to handle. We're really lucky with that. We always like to look for horses that are nice and easy to handle and stable. The only thing he likes to do is act like he's not very interested. He is secretly loving the attention, not that he wants to show you. So what else have we been doing? So 
We started a vending in 2018 at B90 level and he was quite a big step up for me. I've been used to riding sort of a 14 2, then a 15 2. And although he's 16 2, a lot of people are always surprised he's not kind of bigger because he's quite stocky. And so it took quite a long time to get used to him. We found that I kind of, I'd go out and I'd do all right, but it was nothing amazing. You know, maybe one discipline would go not quite as well as the others. Maybe I'd have a couple of poles or my dressage wouldn't be great. So we kind of were out and I was really happy to be out and loving my eventing and have found the horse I love to ride, but we weren't sort of smashing it as such. And then everything sort of clicked last summer when we qualified for the Pony Club Eventing Championships at 100 level. I was so happy. I think we came second in the whole competition individually. We got our first ever sub-30 dressage, double clearance at the time. I felt like we'd smashed it and we were all ready for champs. We were prepping, training, we upped the amount of galloping we were doing, up the fitness. We were on our last fitness session before champs. We went up to the gallops, had to get in a lorry and travel about half an hour. Got off the lorry, my grandma and granddad were there because it was so close to champs that everyone was like ready. <laughs> everyone was like ready to come watch. Everyone was really rallying around me and supporting me because they knew that this was something I'd been aiming for for quite a long time. Got off the lorry. He's super happy. He's like, where are we going? What are we doing? Super excited. And my mum just goes, oh my God. He'd stolen himself on the lorry and just taken a chunk of his flesh out of his foot about a week and a half before champs. I was gutted. Um, I really felt like we would we were making progress and we were ready for the champs and I really felt like this was our year. So that was pretty disappointing, especially when the vet came out at first and said, oh, actually you might just about be all right. He should be sound and recovered pretty much on the day of champs. So depending on how fit he is, within about three hours we realized it was not gonna be that easy. Things needed restitching and then eventually things didn't restitch and they needed pulling off. So it was the most frustrating thing because he is the soundest horse in the world he hasn't pulled a single shoe I mean, he's never had like a day's lameness even throughout all that time where he's had this chunk of foot missing he was completely sound and kind of ready and wanting to be out and doing things but uh no alas it was not meant to be that was the year that i got to take towie in the 90s as a bit of a replacement so it was okay but i was really like had my sights set on that and going up there with towie and then walking the 100 courses if he was doing it i was like this would have been perfect for us and then this year things like definitely clicked even more. We consolidated with our winter training and we came out and we came fourth our first event of the season at Swellcliff. So that was a really good start. We started on the under 18s. We actually got long listed for Frickley. We weren't picked. And I think that was a bit of a blow. Like I knew I wasn't gonna be picked, but it's so competitive and it was completely fair enough. But it was definitely something I had my sights set, set on and I wish I had like another year in it to do it. I'm gonna focus. So we went back to Aries this year and with Frankie out of the way, I was like, I'm going to Pony Club Champs. I'm like, I really, really want to go to Pony Club Champs. And he posted, you know, another pretty nice double clear, uh, dress was just over 30 and we qualified again. And this year the champs were cancelled because of the weather. So <laughs> it's definitely been a little bit gutting. Uh, he's qualified two years on the trot and the weather has stopped us this time. So that was a bit of a pain because again, we felt this year like we definitely needed it. And, you know, we'd worked towards it and we were definitely, definitely ready for it. So our aims for 2020, I've got some big plans with him because like I said, I felt like a couple of things this season didn't really fall into place as well as missing out on champs. We actually went to our first international class. It was both mine and his first ever international class. We had to pay to sign up, pay the entry fees um, to go into the two start south of England. We went, we did the dressage. I walked across country. I was super excited, super game and then it got rained off. <laughs> so we did the boring bit, so we didn't get to do the fun bit. So definitely um, for 2020, that's like another big aim for him because I really think he can go out and smash two star. Specifically, we're aiming for the Bishop's Burton under 21 two star because you know, it's an amazing opportunity and having missed out on the under 18s, it seems like the logical next step. As well as that, we want to go to Pony Club Open Eventing Champs. That's definitely something that we've kind of got our sights set on and we're aiming towards. So I think that's, that's pretty much actually. I know that when he stands here looking like a bit of a donkey, I don't think he's capable of it, but I promise you, he is he's very handsome when he wants to be. So yeah, I think that's just about everything with Atty and we'll bring in Stella next. And finally, I'm here with the latest addition to this cart collection of horses. This is Star. He's 16 too, he's nine years old, and we got him from Ireland. It was definitely the longest we've ever searched for a horse. So as you do, I'm mid-A levels, and I'm like, 
I need another pause. I need more work <laughs> because that's what they are. I realised I wanted to take a gap year and we decided that to maximise my gap year, to get the most out of it, I should have two courses that I can try and sort of campaign at a bit of a higher level um, because we never seem to have all three horses sound at once. So by getting another one, we're increasing the chances of having one horse sound the whole season. It's a miracle. So we started looking in May. We started locally, then we got further and further away. We went three hours down south, three hours up north. We actually got two horses vetted, which means there were two horses in that that we really, really liked, but neither of them came through, they both failed. Um, and we got to about September time at our wits end, like your gap year started, there's not really much time left for looking for horses. So we decided to fly out to Ireland. We flew out to Ireland and it was one of the most chaotic days I've ever experienced. It was an amazing day, but we got there and realized the itinerary that had been prepared for us involved more driving in hours than hours we were actually in Ireland, let alone actually trying any of these horses, meeting the owners, meeting them, riding them. So we decided to cut down on how many horses we were going to see from what had been prepared for us. And we kept the couple in that we liked the most, which included this boy here, Abel Star. Went to try him. I really, really liked him. He's different to anything I've ever ridden before because unlike Atty, who's a big horse with a pony brain, he's a big horse with a horse brain. So it's definitely taken a little while to get used to him. We actually ended up bringing him home in October. He passed his five stage vetting, flew through the x-rays, all of that. He passed in October, brought him home. We had him here for about three weeks before I went off traveling because, you know, convenient. So though he's been over here for about two and a half months, we've actually only had about a month and a half of actual grid and work together. So it's been really interesting to see how we've progressed in that short amount of time. At the end of week one of owning him and being over here, we took him out for a little hunt trial locally. And we had great fun, but he was definitely a lot for me to handle. He wasn't naughty, he wasn't rude. He was just quite, excitable and quite strong. I wasn't used to his jump. He's got such a big scopey jump and that's definitely something that I'm getting used to. So I thought, oh goodness, it's gonna take quite a long time to really crack down and get to grips with him. But actually, even a few weeks later, the sort of progress we've been making is enormous. We went to our first BS show. I'm not particularly BS knowledgeable, but he went out, he jumped two double clears and qualified for some amateur second rounds in the 85 and 95. So he's definitely, he's definitely a trier. And I'm really, really excited for the future we've got together because he's super honest and super genuine. One second he's very calm, the next he might be very alert. So it's just getting to know him a bit more and we've got to work on his dress size quite a bit as well. But he's definitely an asset to the family and we all love him already. And we all think he's capable of some big things next year, which leads me on to our aims for next year. We're hoping to get him out of venting. He has actually done a bit of venting, but not too much. So we're really hoping to crack down, familiarise him with it. He's such a, like, a bold and brave horse that we hope, touch wood, he's not going to have any issues. We're going to start him at 90 and hope to move him up to novice in the middle of the season. We'd really, really love to go to Open Pony Club Champs eventing with him, or maybe Pony Club Champs show jumping as well. So there's a lot on the table, but obviously we're still quite a new partnership. So we kind of have to play it by ear, see how it goes. The most important thing is that we get to know him, we get out, we have fun and uh, hopefully he loves eventing as much as he loves the show jumping. So I think that brings us to the end of the vlog. So you've met all the horses, you've met the team and now hopefully everything else I post should have a little bit more context and make a little bit more sense and I hope this channel can document me on my way to hopefully achieving some of those aims. Star wants to say goodbye. <laughs> So yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video and now you understand me and the horses a little bit more. And finally, a big, big thank you to Dan, who's uh, been my cameraman and filmed for the horses. So that's brilliant because like I said, my tripod did not take iPhones. So we're definitely learning. So yeah, thanks very much for watching.